Okay. In in Od Milvado, like from Chaper to Baruch Hashem, has helped us with tonight the the Mizonot and the Shachol. This is all tonight the Luni Shmat, the Kedoshim, the forty five Kedoshim. If I want to mention Dani's name, does anyone remember his name, his full name? The Luni Shmat Dani Morris. Nachman Daniel Ben. Okay, it'll, it'll, we'll get to it. Okay. We'll sing the nigga and you'll find the name. You'll find the name. This is the nigga we sang before because really there's nothing to say. Besides Enod Milvado and Shumda and Malomar. Just Enod Milvado. Enod Milvado. Enod Milvado. Einod mi levado, efes zuloso. Einod mi levado, einod mi levado, einod mi levado, efes zuloso. Okay, I know it's late, but if we were in Meiron, it would only be starting right now anyway, right? So, um, our, hearts, our hearts should be wide open right now, and mamash b'shem kol Yisrael. B'shem kol Yisrael. What we're going to be learning right now, this is like you see in the first page, Yom Ptirato Shel Rashbi. This is the day that B'shem Bar Yochai passed away. By the way, we got the name, Nachman Daniel Ben... Ben Tzvi Arye. Um, we're going to be learning tonight a little bit from this Mamish from the Zara Kodesh on the day that Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai passed away. I can't hear you. I can't believe it. Like, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. I love you. I lo- I, you missed me. You know how much I missed you. I was going to say, Chaser, I have Chaser Lita. Okay. The Hilula of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, okay? The Hilula of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. It's not even saying what date it is, it just says Yom Ptira Toshel Rashbi. You okay with that? Just Yom Ptira Toshel Rashbi. You know, Chaver, just if you don't mind, are there doors on, on, the, on the bathrooms? We could just close the doors over there. Now, as you see, this perush on the bottom over here comes from the Beit Midrash of Rabbi David Abu Chatzera in Naharia. This is, uh, there's, there's a few perushim on the Zohar that are just you know, m- wonderful. One of them that many of us have is called Matok Midrash. That's a beautiful one. We have it in the show, huh? The Sulam. The Sulam. Mm-hmm. This Akete Vakavod, I've been in love with this one. They didn't finish yet the whole perush. You saw this before? I haven't seen it. By the way, did you say hello to your old bandmate? I didn't see him. Oh my God! Oh. Ellie was in the Das Yeshiva band. Do you guys know that? Is he, is he, is he going to be here tomorrow? No, 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 no. He's not going to be here tomorrow. But I won't tell on you. It's fine. This is from this is from the perush that comes from the Beit Midrash in Naharia. It's beautiful. Now, there's no inyan to crack our head right now. Or to we must crack our head open with trying to decipher. All the, all the Aramit. What I want to go is to go into the home of Rebbe Shem Bar Yochai, the day that he's nifter. So, as you see on top, in the bold print is the actual language from the Zohar Kodesh. On the bottom, not the bottom bottom, but the middle section, is basically what I'm going to be learning from with the Aramaic. And when I think we need to read the Hebrew as well, we'll read it also to get a little bit clearer over here. But this is describing basically 
the same day, now according to the Perush, I know it's going to be hard for you, it was, <laughs> it was Lagba Omer over here. Um, but let's see how tonight the gates are wide open. Rabbi Shon Baruch Hai said that even if you don't understand and you're learning the words of the tzaddikim and you're makasha, you're neshama to the tzaddik that you're learning with, it's better than learning and thinking that you understand. Because when you learn and you think you understand, then there's no longing to know more than what, what is. When you're learning and you don't even understand what you're learning, but you know you so much want to connect to this, so even if we don't understand every single word that's coming out from here, just know this is going in somewhere, okay? It's going in somewhere. So we can start like this. Yom passed away Tana. The day that Rabbi Shimon wanted to go and leave the world. Now it's interesting that the Zohar Kodesh says, the day, the day that Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai Ba'ali Istalka. Why is that such a deal? Ba'ali Istalka? He wanted to leave. Not the day that he was dying, the day that he wanted to leave the world. Very, very interesting. You understand the deal, Chavra? Ba'ali Istalka. He, the day that he wanted to leave the world. There's, there's a copy here. So here the parish says, "I am a sadela tzmoat tzedut Torah sheratza legalotam biyom ptirato lifnei talmidav." He was already was organizing for himself all the secrets of Torah that he wanted to reveal to his students the day that he would die right before he died. Now, have you heard of the word idra before? Ha idra, what's idra? A seifa, gathering. Idra Rabba, larger gathering. Idra Zuta, what's Zuta in Aramaic? Tzutzik, smaller, not, not Tzutzik, but <laughs> smaller gathering. So this is right before the smaller gathering was going to take place. As Kshashamua, Chavirim, Shrabi Shimon, Mitkonen, Lishat, Piratom, in Aulam, the students heard, the friends heard, oh boy, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai is getting ready to leave this world. It Kanshu, Chavraya, Lebeir, Rabbi Shimon. They all gather together in Rabbi Bar Yochai's house. V'havukami Rabbi Elazar Brei v'Rabbi Abba Ushar Chavraya. And where did they come before? Rabbi Elazar, who was his son, and Rabbi Abba, who plays a very big role. Remember the name, Rabbi Abba. Rabbi Abba plays a very big role, but in, in our Masoret, but Bifrat, the day Rabbi Bar Yochai leaves the world. And Rabbi Elazar, who's Rabbi Elazar? Rabbi Elazar? <laughs> Rabbi Lazar, how many years did he spend with his father in tight company that we know of? We know of 13. There's probably many more years, but the 13 that we know of play a big role in our exposure to the life of Rabbi Shem Bar Yochai. So they're all coming before Rabbi Lazar, Brave Rabbi Abba Ushar Chavrai, the Havamalia Besa. That means the house of Rabbi Shem Bar Yochai was filled. And I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm flowing because it's 11.15 and most of us are over 40. Zakif Einoi Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon lifted up his eyes. The Chama de Ismali Besa, Vera Ashit Mala Bait Manashim. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai sees, oh my God, this, my house is filled. Also, those, like the Peru says, Umehem Gam Elu Shinichnesu Lelo Reshuto. And there's also people that came in the room and they wasn't with the Reshut of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. It wasn't with his permission. Al Ka'a? No, no, Chas <laughs> Vechalila. I'll explain. Idra Raba is a greater asefa of Chavirim. It's more like, Idra Zuta is like the VIP club, if you know what I mean. Idra Raba doesn't mean bad, it just means, uh, I, don't, I don't know, I have a better way of explaining, but basically not, not the VIP club of Chavra. Bachar Rabbi Shimon, but Rabbi Shimon starts crying. Ve'amar, bizmana achra kadavina beveimare. And another time when I was sick, Havei Rabbi Pinchas ben Yair came. Rabbi Pinchas ben Yair who stood before me to come and visit me while I was sick. He was still alive back then. Rabbi Pinchas ben Yair. Ve'ad devarer na duchtai. Ve'ad be'od shani mevarer makom menuchati be'gan Eden. While I was figuring out my place in Gan Eden, I thought I was about to die. Hosifli heish nos chayim. Rabbi Pinchas ben Yair added me. He gave me another five years to live. Chavra, did any of you ever feel like you were dying? that you were about to expire, right? Besides, <laughs> no, like mamish feel. So if any of us Khalila feel that, I don't think we're busy with Misader Armakom in Gan Eden. 
That's what Shem Bar Yochai was doing the previous time, five years prior, when he was very sick and saw that he was about to, he thought, he thought he was about to check out. Comes in Rebbe Pinchas Ben Yair, who was alive back then, and somehow he gives him such a refu and adds him five more years. Why is Rebbe Shimon Bar Yochai crying right now? Because Rebbe Pinchas Ben Yair is not around anymore. That means it's bye-bye time. Orichu li ad hashta, v'imtinu lo b'ptirati min haolam adata, they waited for my ptira till now, v'kad tavna. And when I came back to the world, my neshama came back to me, back in that time, five years prior. Aschar esha mikamai. That means, hayta esha shechina mesavivet lefanai tamid. The fire of the shechina was constantly surrounding me. Umealmin lo ispasi. Umeolam lo nifsaka ha esha imezvevoti. And that fire, from then, has not stopped to surround me, from five years prior. And no one could come into my house because of this fire that was surrounding me unless I gave them reshut to go inside. But now I see that this fire stopped. How do I know? Because you're Because you guys are all here, yeah. <laughs> Meaning, if you were in here, I'd know the fire is still surrounding my house and it's protecting from those that should be here and those that shouldn't be here. And now the house is filled with people that came in without reshut. And this Rebbe B'Shem Bar Yochai is starting to, is starting to, to, to cry over. Okay? So like this. So Rebbe B'Shem Bar Yochai is, 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 is crying because the ash of the Shechina stop isn't surrounding him anymore. Hashem heard his tefillah and then immediately at the Havu Yasveh. The chaverim are sitting around. Pasach ein or Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon opens his eyes. Mechama madachama. He sees what he sees. And he sees now that the aura of the Shekhinah is coming to him. Ve'azchar esha beveisa. And the fire is surrounding the whole house. Why? Again, k'day leharchik et ha'anashim sh'nichnesu l'beit Rabbi Shimon below Rishusa. The fire is coming back. What is the signaling? What is that signaling to the people in the house? I gotta get out of here. Yeah, time to leave. As nafkukulu, everyone leaves, besides two people. Ve'ishtaru Rabbi Elazar Bray, if the son, his son Rabbi Elazar stays, ve'Rabbi Abba, like I mentioned before, Rabbi Abba stays as well. Ushar chavraya yasvu abray, but the rest of the chavra waited outside. They stood outside. This is Rabbi Shimon's last day in the world. The fire is back in this moment, and everyone left besides the son and Rabbi Abba. Omar Rabbi Shimon the Rabbi Elazar Bray, this Rabbi Shimon says to his son, Puk chazi ihacha Rabbi Yitzchak. Go outside and see if there is a Rabbi Yitzchak that's here, waiting outside. The Ana me'arven alei. I was arev ba'ado la'atzila me'mavis l'chaim. I was a guarantor to save him from death to stay alive, this Rabbi Yitzchak. Uleholicho imi legan eden be'es p'tirasi min ha'aylam. And to lead him with me to Gan Eden when I leave the world. It's a whole story in the Zohar. And Rabbi Shem Bar Yochai is wondering, is this Rabbi Yitzchak here that I made a guarantor for him that I'm going to... He has to be around for this process. So they told him to be Masader what needs to be happening before he leaves the world. Sorry, did I, did I skip the word? No. And then he'll come and sit next to me. Zakai Chulke. Ashrei Chelko. What a privilege it'll be for him to sit with me right now as I leave the world. So, now, did this Rabbi Yitzchak come back or not? We don't know yet, but the Zohar continues. This is amazing. Come, Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon's dying. But he sees the Shechina, the fire of the Shechina approaching him. Come, Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai gets up to approach the Shechina. Is there another copy? Let's see, you're sharing, right? Good. Uh, it's going to be too complicated. Okay, let's say that. You'll keep it. Come, Rabbi Shimon Ve'yosiv. And he goes back and he sits in his place. V'chaich v'chadi. And he's laughing. He's smiling. That he was zocha that this Shechina came back to the room. Ve'amar. An inun chavraya. Where are the chavra that left the house when the fireball came in and everyone got out of here? Kam Rabbi Elazar, mimkomo, his son gets up from this place, ve'oyilon, and he brings in everyone that was standing outside into the house. You know, I, yesterday I was in Tkoa in the morning, 
I had a meeting by someone that lives right across from Rav Menachem Fruman, Zechir Tzadik um, And this this house now, I I was I actually once had the privilege of actually being by Rav Fruman for Shalosh Shiris, so I remembered it a little bit. But my friend Rav Raz Hartman, I remember seeing a picture of him sitting outside Rav Fruman's like bedroom window on the floor outside the house, and all the Talmidim were surrounding the house while Rav Fruman was taking off to the next world. It was just his Yorzeit, I think, right? Not too long ago. So all the Chavarim were sitting outside the Bar Yochai household. They ran out. Now Rebbe Lazar says, Abba said to come back in. So they all come back in. Yasvu Kamei, they all come back and sit by Rebbe Shimon Bar Yochai. Now listen to this. Zakif Yedoy Rebbe Shimon Umetzalei Tzlosa. Rebbe Shimon lifts his hands up. Umetzalei Tzlosa. He starts to daven. And he was happy. The Chavarim that are here right now, that were with us during the Idra Rabbah, the larger gathering, these are the same ones that should be here. But Shar the Chavra that Rabbi Elazar brought into the house, sorry guys, you gotta leave again. Again, the Idra Rabbah was the greater gathering. Now, it's not the time right now to explain the difference in what Reb Shimon Bar Yochai transmitted during the Idra Rabbah versus the Idra Zuta. It's a very beautiful mahalach. It's different things. But what's important for us to see here is Reb Shimon Bar Yochai says, whoever was with me before, maybe when I wasn't about to die, and you're here now, you could stay. Whoever just heard I'm about to die and now you want to be around me, it seems the Zara Kodesh is saying, sorry, Chavra, you have to leave again. What epic Hasidic story does this remind anyone of? We've said it a few times over the last God knows how many years. The night that the Ishbitzer left Kotsk. What ended up happening? The night the Ishbitzer left Kotsk was Motzei Simchat Torah. Does anyone remember this story? It's a beautiful story, heartbreaking story. Most of the Hasidim left with the Ishbitzer to Ishbitz from Kotsk. The Kotsk Rebbe comes out of his room in the middle of the night to the base Medrash. And he looks around to see who's here in the base Medrash, and he says like this, whoever is here can stay tomorrow. Whoever isn't here can't stay. And what, is, what do you mean? If they're not here, then we, what do you mean they can't stay? It's because he knew that tons would be coming back, which is exactly what happened, but they were told they can't come back. So if you weren't here when it wasn't so cool to be here, you can't be here now. Because well, he went a little bit more extreme. He said, because it says, that you have to have fear of your Rebbe like you have fear of Shemaim. And he said, just like you only have one God in Shemaim, so too you can only have one Rebbe. So Rabbi Shem Bar Yochai is saying to the Chavra, again, only the Chavra that were with me before can be here now. Beseder. Who could stay? Nafku kulu. Everyone left. Besides, veishtaru shisha chaverim shiu ba'idra raba. Only six chavra stayed now. Okay, now the setting is set. It's unbelievable. Rabbi Eliezer Bray, his son, Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Abba, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yossi, and Rabbi Chia. Remember these names. Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Abba, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yossi, and Rabbi Chia. These were the students that were allowed to stay in the house as Reb Shimon's going into the next stage of his departure from this world. Adahachi al, Rabbi Yitzchak. And then who walks in? Remember the guy that Reb Shimon summoned? Mm-hmm. This Rabbi Yitzchak comes inside. Amar le Rabbi Shimon, kama ya'os chukach. How great is your chilek in Gan Eden. Kama chidu bai li tosfalach b'hayoma. How much simcha needs to be added onto you on this day, because this is the day I'm leaving the world. You'll be, and he's basically saying to him, you guys are going to witness what's clear to me right now, that the Shekhinah is right here in the room. Yosef Rabbi Abba Basar Kasfoy. So Rabbi Abba was sitting behind the Kasfoy, the, the shoulders of Rabbi Shimon. So, Rabbi, so basically Rabbi Abba's right here, and then it says Rabbi, Eliaz, Rabbi Elazar Kameh, that means he's sitting right before his father. This is just good for imagery. Mm-hmm. You know where else we have like beautiful imagery of the moment that Tzaddik dies? Rabbi Nassim gave us amazing imagery of what it looked like in the room that Rabbi Nachman was in as he left the world. Mamash, every, like stage by stage. 
Omar Reb Shimon, next page. Ha-hashtashat adir'usahi. Right now, this is an amazing opportune time. Eis Ratzon. Eis Ratzon. The gates are wide open to be mevaris of the Satora. You know, when I heard the words Eis Ratzon last in life, I listened to too much radio. What did I hear? Did anyone hear the conversation that Noam Raza's widow had with Bennett this morning? Did you hear what she told him? She didn't rip him. She said, Naftolchik, <laughs> it's an ace ratzon right now. What's an ace ratzon? What does that mean, eight ratzon? And when do we say eight ratzon on Shabbos? Only by men, Chavanit, Filati, Lachanashem, eight ratzon. Elokim, Rav Chazdeh, Chanim, Emti Shecha. Why? Rav de Ravin. It's a time of, what does it mean, the ratzon? Some people die, no? Also, the same Moshe Rabbeinu also, like, what, what's the whole Indian of, uh, 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 what's, what's an eighth ratzon? <laughs> but look, forget about Shabbat, I'm saying Bichlal, an eighth ratzon. Like, what does it mean that there's an eighth ratzon? What, was she, what did she mean today when she told the Prime Minister it's an eighth ratzon? What was she saying? The gates are wide open right now to act upon something that you normally, the opportune time, that it's usually not that wide open. She was saying that Noam, her husband's mysterious nefesh, cracked open the hearts of Am Yisrael, and right now it's an ace ratzon. Right now it's like, forget about everything before. Forget about all the strategies. Forget about everything. Right now it's an ace ratzon. Reb Shimon Bar Yochai is saying, right now it's an ace ratzon. And I want to go into the next world in Gan Eden without being embarrassed, without being ashamed. And therefore, there are holy words I haven't revealed until now, not even in the Idra Rabbah. I'm about to tell you even deeper secrets than what I've kept before. And you all know, the last day of Rabbi Shem Bar Yochai's life, he spent by revealing giluim upon giluim, revelations upon revelations on what he saw in Shamaim and how it's interpreted down in this world and how to act upon it. And that was all in one day, the last day of his life. He's giving this whole thing over. Who else was very, very busy the last day of his life that we know of? Maishu Rabbeinu. How many parshas happened on the last day of Maishu Rabbeinu's life? Maybe even four. Nitzavim vayelech ha'azinu mezot abracha. Maybe four. Three for sure, maybe four. The tzaddikim in this world are busy. Busy to the last second. Reb Shem Bar Yochai is last day in his life, and he's saying, I've saved stuff until now. I've saved certain stuff that I knew, that I can't go up to Shemayim with Busha if I didn't give it over, if I didn't teach it. Ba'ena legale kame shechinta. In the second column. Ba'ena legale kame shechinta. Ani rotze legalot alifnei shechina. I want to reveal right now before the shechina that's in this room right now. De lo yemu deha begriusa yistalka me'alma. That they shouldn't think Gan Eden that I left this world with a blemish, with a chisaron. If I don't reveal these secrets right now. I want the shechina to be my witness and testify that I'm giving it all. I'm giving it my all. Ve'ad ke'ant miran hava beliba. And in ve'adata, until now, these secrets were concealed within my heart. My das was not to reveal them down in this world, but rather to go into the Olam Abba and to reveal them up there in Gan Eden. But I changed my mind, basically. Can you pass me some caffeine? I'm sorry. Oh, you don't have to point me. That's okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you. Some chaperets again for all this. Bemet, yeshet koach gadol. V'chach azdar na lechu, and now I'm setting you guys up while I'm about to reveal myself. He's going to say what each student should be doing. So just a, the, the parallels are unbelievable. When the Naim Ali Melech left the world, they said that all his chushim were given to different students as well. The Rimenover got something. The Choyza of Lublin got something. It's very interesting. Rabbi Abba Yichtov. This is Rabbi Shem Bar Yochai's deathbed. Rabbi Abba, you are the one that's writing down what I'm... You have to write down what I'm saying. Rabbi Lazar Bri Yale. And Rabbi Lazar, my son, you're going to teach and go over what we're saying right now. So don't worry 
about transcribing, you have to be teaching the words I'm going to be saying right now. The rest of the chavra, you have no permission to, to, to speak these words. You have to, you know what means? You have to whisper this in your heart. So it's really just two people that have an active job. Rabbi Abba, to write down what Rabbi Shem Bar Yochai is about to say, and Rabbi Lazar, to give over and transmit this beautiful, what, what's going to happen right now. Come, Rabbi Abba, Mibasar Kisfoy. So Rabbi Abba, now, remember he said he's behind Rabbi Shimon's shoulders? He went to a place that now, in front of Rabbi Shimon probably, where he could actually sit and write. The Yosif Rabbi Lazar Brekame, and Rabbi Lazar, his son, stayed and sat in his seat. Omar lay, and Rabbi Shimon said to him, Kumbri, get up, my son. There's another tzaddik that's coming from Gan Eden right now that's coming to sit down in the seat. <laughs> Come, Rabbi Elazar. Okay, <laughs> I'm not messing with that. Rabbi Elazar gets up. Isatif Rabbi Shimon the Yossi. Rabbi Shimon puts a talis on and he sits down. Posach, he begins talking about the tzaddikim, the Amar. Lo hameisim yehalelu ka velo kol yordei duma. So Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai is about to re- begin to reveal the secrets that he wanted to leave till the end. Actually, he wasn't even sure he was going to leave it till the end. We just said maybe he's going to take it with him to Gan Eden. But now he's saying, Chavre, listen, listen. This is what I want to say. Lo hameisim yehalelu ka. The dead cannot be the one, can't praise God. And he said, in the Perush, he says, V'kashe, this is a little bit hard. It's easy to understand that the Mesim, the dead ones, can't praise God with their mouth. Doesn't mean dead people. The Kavana is like this. Those that are considered to be dead while they're still alive, they can't praise God. Huh? While they're alive, they're ever ashamed. God is called Chai. He's a Melech Chai Chayim. And God dwells amongst those that are considered alive, both those that are physically alive, and those that are physically not alive, but are definitely alive, tzaddikim that have left this world. He's basically explaining why he told his son to get up. You realize? What did he tell his son, Rabbi Lezer, to get up? Why did he tell him to get up a minute ago? For the mate who's coming back. Yeah, uh, the chai, the chai, the chai, right, the real don't say the mate. That, not for the mate. For the, tzaddik. for the tzaddik that's coming and sitting in the room. Is this tzaddik physically in this world, or was he buried beneath the ground? His body was buried beneath the ground. Without getting into it, there's a woman in the community that revealed to me at a certain point in the last few years that she had to go do zihui for her father. We should all live long. Our parents should live long. They had to identify their parent before they bring him to Kavura. And she was so nervous about going to that back room. And um, she said to me that the craziest thing happened. She saw her father... Uh, no, she said she didn't see her father. She saw a body, but it was clear to her as daylight that that wasn't her father. That the father was mash, not that it was the wrong body, mm-hmm. but that, 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 that her father mm-hmm. was not there. So she said she felt so guilty that through the Leviah and the Shiva and the Shloshim, she wasn't like mourning or in pain because she had such a shlemus adas that he's chai. And not in the form of a body. It just a it just, that's, that, that's what she kept on saying. But the shaila was, should I feel guilty about this or not? That I didn't really mourn. What a shaila. What a shaila. So Rabbi Shem Bar Yochai is telling Rabbi Lazar, listen, you got you to get up. Why? There's someone that's chai that's coming to sit over here. Ah, lo meisim haluluka. Listen, meisim? There are people that spend their whole lives, they're meis. These tzaddikim are alive. Now, I also think that maybe perhaps Rabbi Shem Bar Yochai is kind of giving consolation to the students, saying to them, listen, in a few minutes, I'm not going to be here physically, but understand what it means to be alive and what it means to be dead. So 
The Hakucha Bihu Chai Ikri Vushari Binun de Ikrun Chai in bottom paragraph, bottom line, the law in Inun de Ikrin Mason. But God doesn't dwell amongst those that are that are considered dead, which are the Rishaim. The Sofe de Kra, the end of the Pasuk shows us what we're talking about, because it says, the law call your day Duma. What does that mean? The Chol Inun de Nachsin le Duma, all the Rishaim that their end, they, after, they go after their Misa, they go to Gehenna, which is a place Duma. Begehenem Yishtarun. They get to Gehenem and they stay there. It's these kind of people that can't praise God. Aval Shani, Inun de Ikrun Chaim. But these are very different from those that are called Chaim. De Hakucha Brichu Bai Bikardim. Because the Ribbonish Leilam Bichvot, he wants the covet of these Sadikim and he desires the praise of their Hilula. So I, I was thinking about this. You know, there's such a rich tradition of tzaddikim going up to Meiron and going, you know, I'll tell you a, 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 a true story and there's only one person that could attest to this because it happened with them. I found myself in the, in the mosh pit of all mosh pits three years ago by Boyan. Have you been to Boyan? It's the only Rebbe they let tonight to go up and do the Hadlaka. They do the main Hadlaka first. It's a crazy story. I was there with my brother-in-law, I lot with Yehuda Hanekman, his father's best friends with Rubashkin, who was just freed, and we're hanging out with Rubashkin. A second later, I'm completely alone, and I'm not a small guy. I felt I was cr- mamash thrown from side to side pit. I can't see anything. It was really, really nuts. And then I get thrown, and I hit. I find Yossi Salson. We didn't go there together. I didn't even know he was there. Thousands of people. You weren't even planning on being there. It was a last second thing that you came over from Tveria, right? The tradition over there, up there by Meiron, especially when you learn the swarm of the Breslover Tzadikim, that they go every, as you know, every Erev Rosh Chodesh, and some of you do it so beautifully. What happens there is that it cannot, it cannot be that the Kedusha that's there is just because of the living people that are physically alive, that bring such a nachas and simcha. Everyone's there. It's everyone. It's, it's dore, dorot, it's a lot. You know, Rabbi Nachman was there, right? Rabbi Nachman was in Meiron. Rabbi Shem Bar Yochai. Everyone, everyone's there. It's, it's lo ametim el luka, the tzaddikim are still praising God. Now, Rabbi Shem Bar Yochai has another teaching, Rabbi Yaakov Meir Shechter was teaching, that whenever we're learning the Torah of the tzaddik, and praising God, we're, like you know the Gemara says, we're moving their lips and their kever. Every time we do this. So of course they're still praising the Ribbon Hashem. Of course they are. They laugh, there's no difference. What did Rabbi Yitzchak, was it Rabbi Yitzchak? Or the Alter Rebbe says, death, or Rabbi Nachman said, no, Rabbi Nachman said, told his children he's about to die, or his students, he's like, what do you mean? It's just like going from one room to the next. It's not like anything too big. Don't get, don't get too excited about it. Okay, now, Amar Rabbi Shimon, second column. How much has been different from now and from what we had with the Idra Rabba? The Be'idra Rabba, with the larger gathering, is Damen Kuchabrichu Urisichai. Then when we did the larger gathering, Hashem came with his chariots, but the Neshamas of the Tzaddikim didn't come and show up. Vehashta, but now I'm about to die. In this Idra Zuta, in this smaller gathering, Ha Kuchabrihu Hacha, God is here. The Asi Im Inun Tzadikaya de begins of the Eden. And he came together with the Nishamas of the Tzadikim that are in Gan Eden. They're all in this room right now. How many people are hearing these words? Six. Six. Well, seven if you include Rabbi Shimon. Six people are hearing these words. This did not happen with the Idra Rabba. Now why did they come now? The tzaddikim come now. The kuchabrichu bai bi kareon de tzaddikaya yati mi kara dile. God wants the kavod of tzaddikim more than his own kavod. He wants to merit the tzaddikim with such more than his own kavod. God gives, God wants to give kavod to tzaddikim. Kmo dixiv bi yerav am. Like it's brought down by the story of Yeravam, to have a Mekate and Mephalech Lavodazara. We all know Yeravam, 
right? Was he, uh, was he someone you want to mashadich your daughter with, right? What was he doing? He was busy with a lot of the Vodah Zara. The Kuchabrihu Urichle, but God waited for him and didn't punish him. But then, when he wants to strike up the prophet Ido, that Ido comes and rebukes him over the Avodah Zarah that he's doing, then it takes off the Rebbe Nishleim. His hand, he wanted to, to hurt him, his hand like became frozen. Huh? frozen. frozen. Yeah. Frozen. Yeah. See, Rav Shem Bar Yochai is saying, "Val defalech la'avodah zara loksiv." When it came to him serving avodah zara, meaning dissing God, God did. God said, "I could wait for you to wake up, but ela ad the oshit yade leido nevia." But you're about to strike a prophet, the covet of the tzaddikim. I won't have that. The hashda kuch abrichu bai biikara dilan. And now, as I'm leaving the world, God wants our covet vechulu asan ime, and that's why Rav Shem Bar Yochai is saying, "All the tzaddikim in Gan Eden." came for the covet of Rabbi Shimon, which didn't happen before. So now it's even more and more intense in the room. Amr Rav Shimon, har Rav Yimnuna Sava Hacha. So the Nesham of Rav Yimnuna is here. V'sacharane Shivim Tzadika. And around Rav Yimnuna there are 70 Tzadikim that are from the 70 Tzadikim of the Sanhedrin that are here also. Glifan Be'itrin. And in... Each of them is engraved in Atara. A, uh, hmm? Yeah. Menarin kol chad vechad mizhira de ziva. And every one of them is shining, shining bright. Now, Reb Shem Bar Yochai is saying to them, I know you guys can't see this. I'm just explaining to you, what, what, you know, what's in the room right now. Don't feel bad if you can't see this, right? But, but know that it's here. But it's pretty cool that he's saying, like, I, don't, I don't expect any of you to really see this. But I'm telling you, this is in the room right now. The Atika Kadisha. I'm oh, sorry, so these, these, all these 70 tzaddikim are shining from the Zar Ziv of the Atika Kadisha, the Arch Anpin. I'm not going into that now. These are the Yisodos of Kabbalah that are being revealed at these times right now. We'll, we'll have plenty of years, Mr. Hashem, to learn this. Stima de Kol Stimin, meaning the highest level the highest level of what's called Gilui Elokut, revelation of godliness. And Rav Himnuna Saba came besimcha to hear the words that I'm about to reveal today and the secrets I'm about to share. Meaning, that said God wanted to honor the tzaddikim with what? With giving them a private showing of a revelation of secrets of creation that even they didn't know. And he wanted to honor the tzaddikim that have left the world and said, come, come to Reb Shimon Bar Yochai. This is your covet. I want to mechabit you guys. Ad dehava yasiv. So while Rav Himnuna Saba was sitting down, now again, this is not someone that's, the, the, the other six could, well, right. The, the, not, not someone that the other six could see. Until he's about to sit down. So Reb Shimon, I want Reb Shimon, ha! Pinchas ben Yair hacha. Oh, look who else is here. Rebbe Pinchas ben Yair is here. Askinu duchte. Make a place for him. Izdazu chavrei adahavutaman. They're starting to freak out. It's like, oh my God, this is real. And vekamu. And each of them get up and start making space for these tzaddikim that are walking into the room. Veyastu b'shipulei beisa. And they start to like, you know, sit they didn't know exactly where Pinchas Ben Yair was sitting, so they wanted to make sure I'm going to leave the whole area open. I'm getting, I'm getting out of here. So physically, who was sitting in the room? What did it look like? Three people, I think. Because Rabbi, who was there? Rabbi Abba has to be writing this all down. And Rabbi Lozar has to hear every word to give it over. The others that aren't sure exactly who's here, who's sitting what there, they all... Mitchafev. Okay? He's giving over Torsha B'chav and Torsha B'chav. How so? He's got somebody write it down, and somebody's going to talk it. And someone's going to talk it. Yefeh. Yefeh. But like we said right now, Rabbi Elazar, Rabbi Abba, they stay in that place where Rabbi Shimon is. Amar Rabbi Shimon. In the Idra Rabba, 
what was going on. They call Chavraya Havu Amre Va'ana Imon. All the friends that were there were saying a mimer and so did the Torah, and I was also saying it with them. Hashta'ema Anabi Lechodoi. But now in this Ija Zuti, Zuta, it's not a Chabura. <laughs> Not like, uh, you know, everyone's here to share their daddy issues. Now it's just me. Okay? The chulutzait in the milula. And you have to listen to what I'm saying. Ilayin. These are the exalted secrets of creation. Vetatoin. And also, you know, God and the malachim mala and the shmot tzadikim and you guys, the chaverim, zakoa chul kayom adin. Blessed is my chelik in this day. And the Bishimon begins the secrets. Now, I want, to, I want to say one thing, and we're just, just by much a few more minutes. In Agdamat al Zohar, a Kodesh, so Reb Shem Bar Yochai reveals that he, where, where, when did he begin to receive secrets of creation? Does anyone know where he was, where he physically was located when it started, was starting to be transmitted down to him? In the Yam. He was at the seashore. He was asking, who created all of this? Mi bara ele. Eliyahu Novi came to him and said, Mi bara ele? Look, right now, look at the water. Michlal, gal enai v'abita niflos mitarasecha. Gal, lift up your head. Gal is also 33, lag ba'omer. Gal also means a wave. Gal enai, the waves. The rhythm of the world. Secrets of the world don't mean that everything is smooth. Secrets of the world mean that you know how to, how to surf. That you know how to go up, you know how to go down. You know how to do this. You know, that, that's where Rebbe Bar Yochai's, the entry into all the secrets of the world came. And over here, he's starting to finish the secrets of the world. Now open your hearts, listen to this. Pasich Rabbi Shimon Ve'amar, he starts dashing the Pasuk of Shir Hashirim. I am to my beloved, and upon me is his passion. All the days of my life while I was in this world. And this is a classic statement of Rav Shem Bricho. I'm going to read this, the perush to make sure the words get very, very chazak over here. I was so locked in. Locked in. I was so locked in with the Rebbe Shleilam. That's what it means. I'm mekushar. I'm in. It was, it was, I was locked in. begin kachashta, And therefore, while I'm leaving the world, the rest of the Pasuk, is miskayem bi ve'alai chukato shakadosh baruch hu mishtokek alai. What does that mean? What does that mean? God is mishtokek alai. Come on, it's not hard Hebrew. I was seeking him out. Now he sees me. Peero alai u peeri alav. It's this whole but. Reb Shem Bar Yochai is saying alai chukato happens when. At the end, at the end, my whole life though is what anila doidi, anila doidi. The dehu vechol siyat hakadosh delay asu lemishma bechedva, and therefore, God and the whole machna of kedusha came here with simcha b'tshuka to hear elu milin setimim to hear these words and these secrets that have been concealed from mankind all these years. Now the weirdest thing is that you can say now, oh, we finished learning a Maimar and the Zohar, but wait a second, what's missing here? Ah. <laughs> so there's another Voigt. This happens somewhere else. This happens, the whole, you're waiting for the secrets. This happens somewhere else in the Torah. Where does this happen? Very good. What happens by Yaakov Avinu? He says, what's the Lashon? What's the Lashon? What's the Lashon? He'asfu, he'asfu. What's that in Aramaic? Ijra. He'asfu ve'agida lachem et asher yikre etchem 
So all the time, before Hashem was saying, wait a second, he didn't end up saying anything. So it's like this, it's like, oh, he gathered everyone together, and then he didn't end up saying anything. Well, first of all, here he does. <laughs> right? There's no way that the eyes that are still open will remain open if now we went into that level. But he does already with what he said over here right now, and this is a very important thing. We're experiencing right now in Am Yisrael many orphans. And, it's, and, and I was talking with David Yeshua before about this. It's not, this Lagba Omer is also a, a yard site of 40, how many? 45. No, 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 because there are some brothers. So how many families? It's about 41, 42, 43 families. 42, I think, yeah. It's a, Lagba Omer is different now. It's a different thing. A few months ago, Toby and I went to the home of one of the families that lost their son in Meiron. Their Indian is that, Toby, is it every, is it every Motsay Shabbos? Really? Every Motsay Shabbos, there's Mlav Malka in their house. Now, I don't know exactly what the father looked like before Meiron last year, but he definitely didn't look like what he looks like now. There's this, there's this gilui about what happened last year that can only come from Eliyahu Navi and Mashiach Tzitkenu. Nothing is going to console this, this, this difference now of, of, uh, of what we feel in Lagba Oimer. However, 45 Mason? I don't think so. Lo mm-hmm. Amit, right? 45 Metin? No. Maybe right now there's 45,000 Metim walking around here. I don't know. Now, are they not here? They're not here. Reb Shem Bar Yochai's secret perhaps could be what he shared with us right now, exactly the inyan of what do you consider Chai? What do you consider to be alive? And what's considered to be alive is someone that has a besorah, someone that's something to share with the world that is being shared with the world. The stories we learned about these tzaddikim that left the world, every one of them had a different story that came out after he was nifter that, that injected Am Yisrael with so much, so much. Listen, this, this last korban, Noam Raz, I can't stop thinking about him. I cannot get his face out of my mind. I can't stop thinking about every picture I see of him. The nobility of the family, you know, Hilly Kohn was, Yehuda's son was here, diving with us this Shabbos. He's such a sweet boy. And, um, you know, usually he's very energized, and, and he's, he's a, you know, a drummer, he's got good rhythm. And his face, he looked mamash off, and I came to Shul, and, and I, he's good friends with Noam's son. They went to Yatka together. Then he went to the funeral on Sunday. Been talking to him this week. There's something here. I want to go back to the Almana of Noam Raz. It's an Ace Ratzon. For us tonight, it's an Ace Ratzon. Like we said before about Arevut, about becoming guarantors. What are we taking on right now to make sure Kilosi Shokach Mi Pizarro that won't be forgotten for my children? But I think this Inyan that Reb Shimon Bar Yochai begins to share with us in this piece, in the presence of God, the Tzadikim from Gan Eden and the Shechina, is what is it considered to really be alive? So it's a day of being davek v'atema dvekim b'ashem alekechem. Chaim kulchem ayom. However, there is no, it doesn't, we know already, it doesn't work anymore. We have to up our game of dvekas. Of d- real dvekas. Certain things that we're like, we're holding in both worlds. It, certain things today is the day. The, these things that are not chai, they gotta go. I don't know what it is. For each person it's different. Certain things, they just got to go. It just doesn't work. But the light of the Chai, the Tzadik Chai, Reb Shem Bar Yochai, he helps us on a day like today when hachlatas are made with a bunch of guys at midnight after a long day are sitting here to open their hearts to connect to the Tzadik of Shem Bar Yochai. So the gates are open. It is an Ace Ratzon. It is. It's a moment that the gates of, of Bechira, of hachlatas are wide open. We should have walked through them. We just sang so beautifully right now with Avram peacefully shouted tzedek avovam, and then what? I'm so thankful that I made that decision to go into those gates. So b'mash b'schus Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai b'schus Rabbi Lazar Rabbi Rabbi Abba the other four that were in the room. Please Hashem have rechmanus on us when you see us choosing to be davuk to you. 
and just give us a little bit of a louder, stronger revelation of what it means to feel alive, and may we transmit that to our children. Shukoyach, everyone. Shukoyach, shukoyach.